This morning, we're going to try something that the urban hiker hasn't done in quite a while, and that is hike to someplace new. Most of my walks or hikes here in Kuala Lumpur have been around areas or I guess you could call them routes that I've been on many times in the past. And they're mostly for fitness. So today, this is a Saturday morning, today I'm gonna to be taking a new route, a place that I've never gone before. It's not too long, but it is new. It's called the Changkat Tunku Viewpoint, which is in the hills just above uh, the city. And I'm gonna take a walk up there. It's about four kilometers from where I am right now, which is at the Masjid Jamek LRT station. A good place, by the way, to start any kind of tour or trip in Kuala Lumpur. It's also quite noisy. I just had a delicious breakfast at the Al Rizwan, which in my opinion is one of the finest eateries in downtown Kuala Lumpur. And it's right across the street from the Masjid Jamak LRT station. And you might be wondering how I thought of this walk. Well, I didn't really think of it myself. I had a suggestion from Lady Aisha whom you may remember from such blockbusters as Operation White Coffee and Jungle in the Middle of Town. I'll link those videos in the end screen for this video. Anyway, she hiked there once before, and when I told her I was looking for a new route, she suggested either Bukit Tunku or Changkat Tunku. Both have viewpoints, both are in pretty much the same area. She went to Changkat Tonku viewpoint, so I think that's the one I'm gonna walk to today. Just past the Kuala Lumpur City Hall is a major roundabout. And I mean, you can cross it on foot on the surface if you want to. There is an underground crossing that you can take, which I'm in right now. The tunnel leads to this big wide open area and all you got to do is figure out where it is you want to go or which exit to take. At least like if you were in a car on the roundabout itself. I don't know if this is the right exit or not, but it seems to be heading in the right wet direction, so I'm going to take it. This is one of those things that if you get it wrong, can always come down and try again. We're looking for the Bank Nagara exit, which is, Bank Nagara, by the way, is National Bank. And I think we found it. I took the wheelchair ramp instead of the staircase. Right there is the Bank Nagara. We're gonna head in this direction. Stay on our, our route. If this were a work day, there'd be a lot more traffic on the road. But I would probably still be the only person walking on this little sidewalk. This is an area of town that has a lot of major institutions, I, could, I guess you could say. Bank Nagara, the National Bank, is one of them. And as we go farther up this hill towards Changkat Tunku Viewpoint, we're going to pass a few of the government ministry buildings, probably some 
agency buildings. And if Google Maps is correct, I'm looking forward to this. We're gonna be passing the Malaysian Space Agency. Until recently, I had no idea that Malaysia even had a space agency. But we might be passing it. But it is Saturday, so I doubt there'll be anybody there. And I doubt they would let me in anyway, whether there was anybody there or not, but we're gonna try. We'll see. You can tell just by walking up this hill that this is sort of a special area. It's not, a, it's not like being downtown in Kuala Lumpur at all. Even though that's exactly where we are. We're about one km away from the Masjid Jamak uh, rail station. So we're still pretty much in the heart of Kuala Lumpur. <clears throat> but there's practically, well, I shouldn't say there's no development. I think it's probably planned to be like this. A lot of people, speaking of development, a lot of people confuse Kuala Lumpur, which is the official national capital of Malaysia, with Putrajaya, which is, I think, I'm not sure it has a specific name, but uh, it's more like the administrative capital. There's a lot of ministries and agencies and other government functions that occur in a town called Putrajaya, which is about 60 kilometers north, I think. Actually, I don't know where it is. It's about 60 kilometers away from Kuala Lumpur. <clears throat> but Kuala Lumpur is the national capital. If any of my Malaysian viewers detect that I'm wrong or want to correct me, please make a comment below. I'm pretty sure I'm right. I really have to watch my step now because the sidewalk has disappeared and I'm now walking on the concrete blocks that cover a drainage ditch. These often pass for a sidewalk in Kuala Lumpur. Believe me, I know. But unfortunately, sometimes these blocks are not as firmly anchored as they appear to be. So you really have to be careful. And sometimes the blocks are missing completely. So you have to leap over the gaps. But it's okay. You shouldn't try this at home but I'm a professional. There's a lot of bikes on this road. That's partly because it's a Saturday. And I'm sure a lot of people like to ride it. If I had my bike here, I'd be riding it. It's a nice gentle hill. It's a steady climb and it's a nice downhill. The sidewalk slash drainage ditch has disappeared and I'm now bike walking in the bicycle lane on the wrong side of the road. So I think pretty soon I'm gonna to have to cross over and walk in the bicycle lane on the other side. We're heading towards Bukit Tunku. So that means we continue up the hill. I've crossed the street and am now walking in the bicycle lane on the other side. I think I mentioned this in one of my videos that I made in Pennsylvania, that a lot of times people make a mistake when they're out walking, that they walk with the traffic, just same as they would, the same way they would do it if they were driving. But cars and bicycles always follow the traffic rules. If you're a pedestrian, however, you always walk into the traffic, always. That way you can see traffic as it approaches you. You do not want cars and trucks or anything approaching you from behind. In Malaysia, traffic of course moves on the left side of the road. 
So I am now on the right side of the road, facing traffic on this side. In the United States, I would be facing traffic on the other side. Fun fact, you can look it up. Man, I hate it when this happens. A lot of times when you get to a road that divides itself, you really don't know where you're supposed to go if you're walking. I'm gonna stick to the left because eventually I'm gonna be going left anyway. Ah, what the heck, I'm gonna stick to the right. For the main reason being that all of the traffic will be coming towards me on the road, none of it will be going up on the other side. At least not on the side that I'm on. But I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm pretty sure we are right next to a major highway just through the woods there, because there is one racket coming up from there. Some up, Puggy? Well, we are right next to a major highway. And according to Google Maps, we've got to cross that highway. Obviously, there's a bridge or something that goes across it. But from the way everything looked on the map when I before I left, I'm not sure why we're crossing the highway. I'm gonna trust Google Maps, however. We only have 1.5 km's to go, so even if I get lost, it's not that big of a getting lost. Well, we're crossing the highway. Still no sign of the space agency. It might have been off in the woods or off in the jungle. I think what they do at the Malaysian Space Agency is they have a lot of satellite data that they collect regarding agriculture and things like that. So it makes sense that that's what they would be doing. I'm pretty sure they don't have any launching activities or anything like that. Wow, there's even a crosswalk here. Well, I'm not gonna give it much credence until I actually get across it, then I'm gonna praise it. But it's nice to get off that road. Time to check the map. Okay, we're on battery number two. And we're in the, I can tell we're in the final stages because all of a sudden this has actually turned into a climb. So I'm guessing it's about five, maybe 6%. It reminds me of Bukit Fraser when I rode that on my bike a few times. It's a 40 kilometer ride, all uphill. And it averages out to about 3%. But when you get to what's called the gap, there's a final climb of eight kilometers and it uh, has some eight, nine, 10% stretches. But the whole climb, of 40 kilometers is averaging 3%. So the average person will think, well, 3%, anybody can do that. And they're probably right, anybody can. But by the time you get to the final eight kilometers, after riding uphill for 32 kilometers, it's not as easy as it sounds. Well, it looks like they even have switchbacks. This is turning into more of a climb than I thought. Morning. Morning. Good morning. morning. Sama Puggy. Nobody expects a pedestrian on this road. Morning. morning. Hello.
Can you tell I'm sweating? Man, this is a climb. When Lady Aisha told me about this, I was not expecting this. Which reminds me of some videos I've seen of a lot of young YouTubers that have hit Kuala Lumpur recently. They're surprised by everything, not expecting anything. Everything's fabulous. Anyway, I'm getting off track here. Can you tell I'm sweating? Or did I say that already? Google Maps says I have about three, two to 300 meters to go. So hopefully it's accurate. Well, we've reached the viewpoint, which is, as we, as you might expect, right at the top of the hill. And we have a pretty good view of the city. It's a little bit hazy, a little cloudy today, but still a good view. You can see the towers, or the Twin Towers, the KL Tower, in that other building, I forget what it's called, Merdeka 116 or something, 108. It's a big building. No sign of the Malaysian Space Agency though. I have no idea where that is. From Masjid Jamak, it's 5.2 km's. So I'm gonna turn around and head back now. I don't think I'm gonna record anything on the way back down, because anything interesting, I'm sure I recorded it on the way up. In one of my other videos, I think it was the one where I w walked up Dundaff Street in Carbondale, it was a 4.2 km climb. And I noted that walking up a hill and then walking down a hill is actually a lot harder than just riding your bike up. Because if you're riding a bicycle up, you're doing a lot of work just to get to the top. But once you get to the top, it's smooth sailing all the way down. The only thing you're doing is working your arms to keep the brakes in, in contact with the rims. But when you're walking, you're doing a lot of work to get up the hill, and then you're doing a lot of work to get down the hill. Morning. Morning. Anyhow, this walking down bit, this is gonna be just as hard as walking up. I'm not looking forward to the return trip. Good morning. Well, I just realized I forgot to give the weather report. It wouldn't be an official International Big Shot urban hike without some mention of the weather. It started off this morning at 23 degrees, which is, for Kuala Lumpur, ridiculously cool. However, don't get any ideas that it was comfortable. It wasn't. The dew point at that hour was 22, so it's very uncomfortable. Right now it's 27 degrees, the dew point is 24. So it's still pretty uncomfortable. And it's getting ready to rain. So the weather today for this hike, well, it's, well I don't know what I'm expecting. It's always gonna be uncomfortable here. It would be like a, a, an emergency if it wasn't. If I ever got out of the house, and started walking where it wasn't a high dew point, high humidity, or some kind of uncomfortable temperature, something serious would be wrong. It's always hot. I mean, that's what happens when you live on the equator. Okay, we're back in the realm of sidewalks, so once we get there, you know we're not really far from downtown. I haven't checked the map, but I'm guessing it's about 2 km to Masjid Jamak. 
maybe less. One thing I did not count on today was mosquitoes. Once you get up here in the hills, walking in the, the bushes and next to the, the jungle, you're literally in the jungle. It's not like being in the city where it's mostly roads and things like that. So there's a lot of mosquitoes in this area of town. And of course, the humidity and the heat makes them even worse. But that's okay. I'm a trained professional. Okay, I'm going back down underground so I can cross the roundabout. I only did this once so far. And that was earlier today, but the idea of actually getting across the roundabout without having to watch yourself in like four different directions, this is almost magic as far as I'm concerned. Let's see, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. It's nothing special, it's just a lot of space and you can see over there, they've got gratuitous steps. Gosh knows what those are for. I think this is the right exit. If I'm correct, then I'm gonna come up uh, right in front of the National Bank. Isn't this exciting? I mean, when you're watching the International Big Shot channel, it's a thrill a minute. Well, I'm not sure that's the National Bank, but we are where we need to be. I think that's actually the city hall, which is even better. Well, as you can hear and see, we are back at Masjid Jamek, right where we started our walk this morning. So I am now gonna go back to my house another probably one and a half to two kilometers from here but I'm definitely going to end the video here and this time I mean it so thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one hey folks remember if you subscribe to this channel all of your wildest dreams will come true I'll show myself out